All right, so now we're going to talk about solving radical equations. Solve the square root of 3 minus 2x is equal to 2. Now, we all know that uh, we can pretty much do anything we want to an equation as long as we do it to both sides of the equation. So the goal here is to get um, x out from being underneath the radical sign. Right? That's why it's called a radical equation, because what you're trying to solve for is located underneath the radical sign. That's it. All right, so in order to get rid of the square root, uh, we need to do what to both sides? Right? We need to square both sides. Everybody agree? If this is equal, then if you square both sides, that should still be equal. Okay. Now, why do we do that? Because the square undoes the square root and just leaves you 3 minus 2x. And then 2 squared is equal to 4. And then we've got this simpler equation to solve. Right? Isolate x. So you get negative 2x equals 1. So x equals negative 1 half. Now, there's one other... Um, extra thing we need to do when solving radi radical equations, and that is make sure that you check your possible solutions, because sometimes they will work and sometimes they won't. Uh, the reason why is because this equation right here, uh, negative one-half is definitely a solution to this equation right here, but it may or may not be uh, a solution to your original equation because it, it, it has slightly been changed. Okay, They're not exactly the same. They're equivalent, but not exactly the same. But it only takes a second to check. Take the negative one-half, and I say, all right, what does that go to? Well, that's the square root of 3 plus 1, and the square root of 3 plus 1 is the square root of 4, which does equals 2, so it checks. So negative 1 half is indeed a solution. Uh, let's go over to the second one here. All right, so the idea is to isolate, if you can, isolate a radical. Right, so move the 10 over. So we have the square root of 5x equals negative 10. Get a radical isolated before you square both sides, or cube both sides, or whatever you need to do. Because if this was a cube root of 5x, then we would be cubing both sides. Okay? All right, so square both sides, and it would look like this. The left side just goes to 5x. The right side goes to 100. x is 20. Everybody see that? All right, but check. 5 times 20 is 100, so we have the square root of 100 plus 10 equals 0. Square root of 100 is 10. 10 plus 10 does not equal 0, so it doesn't check. And that's our only possible solution, and it doesn't work. So we have to say, all right, no solution. This equation has no real solution, and that's just the way it goes, right? Not every equation has a solution. Okay, let's do, let's do another one. So uh, isolate a radical. I only got one there, so square root of 3x plus 7, add x to both sides, and you get x plus 3. Now square both sides. All right, when you square this left side, the square undoes the square root, and you're just left with 3x plus 7. Everybody see that? But when you square this right side, you are not left with x squared plus 9. All right? Remember, this means x plus 3 times x plus 3. So you go off the side, you foil that out, and you get x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then you say, all right, well, what type of equation do I have? Uh, you've got a quadratic equation now. All right, so we've taken this radical equation, uh, done something to it, we've turned it into a quadratic equation. All right, so how do you solve quadratic equations? Well, everything on one side. All right, so does it factor? Yep, into 1 and 2. So uh, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 2. All right, so then go back and check. All right, so check x equals negative 1. All right, so what do you get? You get the square root of negative 3 plus 7, would it be 4 plus 1 equals 3. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus 1 does indeed equal 3. Check. All right, so now check x equals negative 2. All right, so you get the square root of, it's the negative 6 plus 7, that would be 1. Plus 2 equals 3. So the square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is indeed equal to 3. So it checks. So both of them check. So both of them are solutions to your original equation. All right, let's try another one. All right, so this one's got a couple radicals in it. The most common error made is to just square each individual part and get x plus 2 plus x is equal to 4. But that is not even near close to being somewhat correct. All right? because right, you have to square the entire side, you're not just squaring each individual part. So uh, just like before, isolate a radical. Let's, is let's isolate the square root of x plus 2. Everybody agree? Okay, so now square both sides. Now the left side, just x plus 2. But this right side, you got to multiply out that right side. This right side really means 
2 minus the square root of x times 2 minus the square root of x. And if you multiply that, you get 4 minus 2 radical x minus 2 radical x. And then a negative radical x times a negative radical x is a positive square root of x squared. And that just goes to x. And then these two inside here go to 4, negative 4 radical x. So you have x plus 4 minus 4 radical x on the right-hand side. And then you say, all right, um, still got a radical. And that's okay, because we originally had two radicals, now we only have one radical, so at least it's getting better. All right, so just like before, since it's a radical equation, you want to isolate this radical. So subtract x from both sides, they go away. Subtract 4 from both sides, and you get negative 2 is equal to negative 4 times the square root of x. And then divide by negative 4, and you're going to get 1 half is equal to the square root of x. And now you've got the, the radical isolated, square both sides, you get 1 fourth equals x when you square both sides. All right, so just do the time issue. I want you to verify the check. Okay. You'll see that it does indeed work, and 1 fourth is a solution. All right, let's do another one. All right, so again, we've got a couple radicals. Yuck, that's just the way that it goes. So isolate one of them. doesn't really matter which one, but I'll isolate the uglier looking one. So adding radical 6x over to the other side, and you look like this. All right, so squaring the left side undoes the square root, and you're just left with 4x plus 1. But squaring the right side, well, you got to go off to the side, and go, all right, that's the square root of 6x minus 1 times the square root of 6x minus 1 when you square both sides. All right, and that goes square root of 6x times the square root of 6x is just 6x. Then you've got a negative square root of 6x and another negative square root of 6x and then a plus 1. So this right side is just going to go to 6x plus 1 minus 2 square root of 6x. And again, we've got a radical, but that's okay. We started with 2. We're down to 1. It's getting better. All right, so isolate the radical again. So subtract 6x from both sides. You get negative 2x. Subtract the 1 from both sides. They go away. Equals negative 2 square root of 6x. All right. Divide by negative 2. You get x equals square root of 6x. All right, so now square both sides again and you get x squared on this side, and you get 6x on this side. You say, all right, now what do I have? Since all the radicals are gone, I now have a quadratic equation. So everything on one side, 0 to the other, and then solve this quadratic equation. In this case, you can just factor an x out. Okay? And you get x equals 0, and you get x equals 6. All right, do the check. All right, so check x equals 0. So that would be, if you plug 0 in for x up here, you'd have the square root of 1 minus the square root of 0 is equal to negative 1. And is that true or is that false? All right? It doesn't check. All right? So what about checking x equals 6? All right, so that gives you the square root. Plug the 6 in, you get 4 times 6 is 24 plus 1 gives you the square root of 25, minus the square root of 6 times 6, which is 36, equals negative 1, and that's 5 minus 6 equals negative 1, and that does work. So x equals 6 is the only solution to this particular equation. All right, so practice, uh, that's the key, as always, uh, and uh, that's it for radical equations. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.